Do runners need insoles or orthotics? So today we're going to talk about insoles or orthotics, specifically in runners. And if you don't know what I'm talking about here, insoles and orthotics are essentially the same thing. They're, they're little things that you put in your running shoe that sort of wedge up the arch of your foot depending on what you call them. I think in North America, they more often called insoles. In the UK, we often call them orthotics. Those things, right? That's what we're talking about today. So we're going to talk a little bit about what they are and why they are prescribed to people, like what the theory is of, of how they work and what they might be doing in order to, to help and what they might help with. And we're also going to talk about like the historical perspective as I see it of how health professionals attitudes towards orthotics and insoles has changed over the years. And then we're going to look at a review that I just read recently by um, Duchetto and colleagues that reviewed all of the research on insoles slash orthotics in runners with pain to date and try and bring that all together at the end for like, what are some good recommendations for runners who have injury who are considering wearing orthotics or insoles. Now, before I get too far into it, I'm just going to specify that I use those terms kind of interchangeably. And I tend to use orthotics because that's just the term I've always used, but I mean the same thing. So if you call them insoles or inserts or orthotics, I'm talking about the same thing regardless. So why are uh, orthotics sometimes prescribed to runners or someone else, uh, either with pain or without pain? And the idea, like generally speaking, is to improve alignment in order that biomechanics are optimized so that certain tissues don't get overburdened with stress that they can't adapt to and cause pain or injury. Said another way, if you've got kind of flat feet, they straighten you up so you don't get like injured. That's the, that's the general gist of them. Now, historically, orthotics were used a lot, what you might call prophylactically, in order to prevent problems. And this is certainly the case when I first got into physiotherapy, like 20 years ago, it was seen as a good thing to prescribe orthotics to people with flat feet, regardless of whether they had pain or not, just because it would straighten them up, it would quote unquote, improve their alignment, and they would be spared from developing further issues with other problems, whether it be from running or otherwise, because of this kind of bad alignment they had because of their flat feet or slightly pronated feet or slightly flat arches or whatever you might want to call it. It was seen as a good thing to improve that alignment by lifting the arch up using an orthotic and then to wear that long time for long term excuse me for for years on end prophylactically to stop problems from developing and certainly like if you go back 20 30 years that was seen as the 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 best way to approach the use of orthotics now that has changed quite a bit in recent years and, and we'll talk a little bit about why so the first thing is that when you when you look at someone uh, at their feet from behind, if they have kind of flat arches, uh, the heel looks kind of tipped inwards, right? And what happened when people started, like health professionals started prescribing orth orthotics is in order to promote them to get people to come into their clinic so that they could prescribe the orthotic so that they could straighten up their alignment, they would use usually a very standard photo, which if you Google the word orthotic, you will definitely see some version of this where you would have a look at someone from behind, right? And they're standing and one foot's on the floor and the arch is dropped. And the other foot, let's say the left foot's on the floor and their arch is like flat and the right foot has an orth orthotic underneath it and that foot's straight. So the arch is propped up and they'll usually draw lines on the back. So a line down the heel and then a line down the, the sort of back of the, where the shin would be. And it would show like one line being without the orthotic kind of wonky and the other line with the orthotic being kind of straight. And this is, this is basically for whatever reason, like marketing gold, because we see that. And for whatever reason, humans are wired to look at that and think, well, the wonky one's bad and the straight one's good. We just kind of feel like that must be bad and the straight one must be good just because of intuition. It just kind of looks better. It's a little bit like those before and after photos that you see for like weight loss and that kind of thing. Or just ch generally any kind of postural treatment will tend to show like a before after or a this versus that with some straight lines on one that are like quote unquote good and some wonky lines on the other that are, you know, quote unquote bad. So we, we saw this kind of uh, emergence as of orthotics being prescribed 
often and people wearing them for years and getting multiple pairs through their life there was you know the development of like custom orthotics and that kind of thing so that you could um customize the orthotic to specifically address the biomechanical issues that you found in a specific individual and that's still very much a thing and as this became more and more um, like mainstream and, and more and more commonly used the more skeptical members of the kind of research community from the various professions mostly like podiatry but also like physiotherapy chiropractic and that kind of thing the researchers started to take a skeptical view of this which is a good thing right this is a, a sign of a healthy health profession as they look at what is being done in the clinical landscape and then they say is this justified is this working is it doing what it claims to do is it doing something else that it's not that it doesn't know about and they started to look at well if 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 we prescribe orthotics to people because they have flat feet do they actually have less problems going forward and it would seem that they don't that they have the same amount of problems with injuries and stuff and pain as as anybody else does it doesn't really matter if they have the orthotics in or not when you look at a broad population it's kind of a wash. They, they don't really have more problems or less problems. So then the use of orthotics like prophylactically to, to sort of straighten people up who have flat feet but otherwise didn't have any problems really kind of went out of style. And in certainly in the spheres of physio that I walk in and that kind of stuff, is it became kind of a something people look down on. Like that's kind of an old school way of doing things that's not really supported by research. And even it started to develop this attitude where that like people are just doing that for money which i don't i think is probably a oversimplification as these things often are because if you are let's say a podiatrist physiotherapist chiropractor who is of the opinion that the the straight line version of that picture of that foot posture is going to help someone avoid injury and pain then obviously you're going to be keen to promote the any intervention that fixes that in this case orthotics so this can very much come from a good place and it doesn't it's not necessarily like just greed where people are just like marketing these orthotics to people and saying they need them when they actually don't it's it's often a case of people believing that yes you need them and it will help you um although i would i what i would say is to this point in you know 2024 the research i've read doesn't support that kind of prophylactic in advance before you have problems use these to prevent problems i don't see research that kind of supports that approach now that being said orthotics and insoles inserts are still often prescribed by health professionals and by me like sometimes not not very often but they are prescribed and they are recommended but it's usually more for like specific use cases in order to address injuries or recurring problems. That's usually the way they're approached now. So rather than just kind of giving everyone who has flat feet, now it's like, well, this person has X, Y, or Z problem. We're going to use orthotics as one of the tools in our tool belt to help address this issue. And this seems to be more where we've landed with orthotics in recent years as this is how they're used. And with that in mind, I was, I was reading this review by Duchetto and colleagues who uh, it was really good and I will reach out to them see if I can get them onto the podcast to talk more about it and I'll put a link to it in the description but what they did is look specifically at running like the evidence to date they reviewed all of the evidence to date where they had they someone had studied runners and the use of orthotics like and, and then they analyzed what the different effects are that were found what was consistent what did it come from like high quality research or low quality and then they tried their best to draw some conclusions based on all of that which is really helpful for me as a clinician because they reviewed you know dozens or maybe even hundreds of papers and then they analyzed them and then they tried to sum up as best they could the what do we actually know from all of this data which is obviously each step away from the research and from the data that you get you get more risk of bias and interpretation or misinterpretation but for a clinician like me who doesn't have time or the even ability to really analyze that much uh, research in that much detail these reviews and and that um what do you call them scoping reviews and <laughs> that's what they call they could be very helpful so what they found is a decent amount of research in like using orthotics for runners with knee pain shin pain and foot and ankle pain and then i'll just read a couple of the conclusions that they drew and then give you my thoughts so when it comes to the knee they said orthotics regardless of the orthotic type so whether it was off the shelf or custom orthotics are effective in decreasing the pain and symptoms of overuse 
running knee injuries, that is anterior knee pain, patellofemoral pain, or general knee injuries. And that certainly seems to, because they were reviewing a lot of the studies that I've read in this area over the years, that seems to reflect what my understanding was as well, that if a runner has knee pain and you give them an orthotic, it does seem to reduce their knee pain with running, although it doesn't eliminate it or sort of fully address the problem, it does seem to reduce the knee pain, which can make it a useful tool when you're, when you're looking at treating a runner with knee pain. And then when they looked at the research on tibia injuries, which is the shin, so really we're talking about shin splints here, they concluded there is evidence suggesting that orthotics can be effective as part of a multimodal treatment plan for active individuals with MTSS, which means shin splints. So yeah, again, as long as used as part of a more comprehensive rehabilitation strategy, it does seem that adding orthotics into the mix for individuals with shin pain with running is helpful. It helps reduce the pain. And then when they looked at the other research, so on the foot and kind of ankle region, so where they looked at the heel and the Achilles, the, there wasn't as much research. So there was a bit, and they did say that in terms of like plantar fasciitis, there is there was one study that showed that it did seem to have an immediate effect in terms of reducing pain. Again, not fully resolving the pain or resolving the issue. But if someone has heel pain when they're running, like in the plantar fascia on the, the sole of the heel, and you stick an orthotic in, that pain often reduces, which can make it a helpful tool. When it came to the Achilles tendon, there was not enough evidence really to say either way. And, and in my experience, the um, the use of orthotics for heel pain, I haven't found it that helpful in the clinic. Whereas with the knee and the shin, I did find it more helpful on those occasions when I did use it. So my kind of takeaways from this paper and just kind of reviewing my attitudes to orthotics as of 2024 would be that orthotics do seem to be a useful addition to a more comprehensive rehab strategy in the case of knee pain and shin pain. So if you're a runner with knee pain or shin pain and you're doing a good rehab strategy, whether that's with us or it's with your local provider and you're con considering adding orthotics to, to help reduce the pain a little bit and just improve the overall effectiveness of the rehab approach that's more comprehensive, like strength, resilience, biomechanics, like I always talk about, if you add orthotics onto that, that does seem to help uh, in terms of like there is evidence to support that that would be helpful and a worthwhile thing to do. When it comes to the heel, uh, you know, whether it's the Achilles tendon or the plantar fascia, there's not as much evidence. But if you were to try it and you did see an improvement in your symptoms, like as soon as you put the orthotic in your shoe and then you sort of walk on it or run on it and it feels better, then it's probably a worthwhile thing to do as well. However, using orthotics, as I say, prophylactically, if you don't have problems, if you just have flat feet in order to prevent you getting problems, it's probably a waste of time. Not going to prevent you getting problems. Runners always get problems. <laughs> so so that unfortunately, it's not a silver bullet. And, and it would seem that there isn't the evidence to support using them in that fashion to just improve alignment just for the sake of improving alignment in order to prevent problems. It's probably not necessary. So if that was... If that's you and that was like 20 years ago and you're still wearing orthotics and still renewing them every couple of years, it, it's worth considering whether that is really necessary. One of our runners recently, we weaned him off his orthotics because he wasn't having problems and he was just like, I've been wearing these for so long and I'm not sure that my feet really need them and I like to run ultras and I don't like that kind of restriction of feeling like I need them I want the versatility of feeling like I can run in whatever shoes I want without worrying about like having orthotics in so we gradually weaned him off over a period of about three four months because he does like really high mileage and that went just fine and right so the, it's not that when you wear orthotics you then have to wear them for the rest of your life I don't, I don't recall ever reading any study that would support saying okay well if you have orthotics and they help with a pain you then have to wear them forever like I, I see them as a temporary intervention, right? They're a thing you do for a little while and then you can take them out and then you can usually go back to, you might have to wean off them, but then you can go back to running without the orthotics in. And then finally, like the difference between off the shelf that you would buy and they're not custom fitted versus custom fitted where you'd go to like a health professional, they'll measure your foot in somewhere, whether that be like, there's like laser, um, what would you call it? Like laser measuring tools to do it there are like four moldings that you can use there's all sorts of things and um, and anytime i've looked at the research comparing the two it seems to be quite similar in terms of the effectiveness like 
in knee pain and shin pain in runners, it seems to be quite effective in terms of reducing those pains, whether or not you have a custom or an off-the-shelf one. So the, the main difference there for me is probably like preference and price. So if you're looking at a off-the-shelf one, it's probably less than $100, right? If you go to like shoppers or your local pharmacy or wherever it is and pick up some insoles off the shelf, probably less than $100. If you go and get it custom fitted, so it's measured for you, it's sent off, it comes back, it's delivered to you, it's all custom built for you. You're usually working with a podiatrist, a physio, um, some kind of clinician. You know, I don't know, you're probably looking at $500 plus. I mean, obviously it depends, but probably in that region. And you might like hear those two figures and some of you guys are probably thinking, well, obviously I'd do the cheaper one, right? Because it's way cheaper. So if it has a similar effect, at least as far as the evidence says, why wouldn't I get the cheaper one? But then some of you will also be thinking, well, $500, like I spent so much more than that on shoes and races and various clothing and running related stuff. Like I'd rather just have the one that was customized to me. And for me, I think both approaches is just fine. So if I was ever looking at orthotics with a runner, I always just said, like, which one do you prefer? Do you want to try the custom one? Do you want to try the off-the-shelf one? Um, we're going to be going with, like, if it feels better, if it improves the pain, then you keep using it. And if it doesn't, then it's probably not worth continuing. Which do you want to do? And then you make the decision from there. I don't have to decide for you what you um, value in terms of, like, customization versus versus not so that's my thoughts on orthotics if you're having any any trouble with injury and you've tried orthotics and you're not getting anywhere like it's definitely not the only thing that you have to consider as you as you know as i talk about on the show all the time we have the three critical components of biomechanics strength and resilience orthotics will influence biomechanics that is one of the three critical components right so if you have been working on the biomechanics by using orthotics and you're not getting anywhere or maybe you are but you're not as far as you want to be there's a lot still to be done so obviously we'd love to have a chat so just click the link in the description as always and if you want to check out that study by Duchetto and colleagues I'll also put a link to that in the in the description and I will I'll reach out I'll see if I can get them on the show to talk about it in a bit more detail cool so thanks for listening